Ready. All right. If Susan's ready, and I reckon I'd be ready too. Welcome, everyone, to the Good Morning Show. We are live from the safe deposit box at the Andrew Johnson Bank Studio. <laughs> see, I can get away with that when Josh is in here. You know, you well, he didn't. He didn't give you bad luck the other day either. So I guess he's given up. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. So, oh well. If well, anybody thinks we can fit all this in a safe deposit box, we're well. Some folks thought we could fit it in a vault, so it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. It is Monday, May 8th. It's 9.04 in the morning. Can yeah. you believe it's already May 8th? And it doesn't feel like it because it's cold out. Right. It was, it was about like 45 we're running degrees. Around, we're running around in bathing suits in, in March, and now we're like coats. How crazy is that? It must be that climate change I'm always hearing about. Oh, yeah. Well, don't, don't get... Don't get my husband started on that. He's a scientist, and he has his own opinions about. Well, we won't go there. <laughs> but we will go here today because we are uh, in, I guess this is part three of yeah. six. Part three of six with Sewing with Susan, and we're talking about uh, making sure that your block is on point. So um, <laughs> if you want, want to kind of recap what we talked about Friday leading into today. Okay. We, we talked about the stars, and if I can get to it real quick, um, we did this star. Yep. Right here. Can you see it okay? I can. Yes, ma'am. There we go. Nice. That's the one we did on... on uh, which, is a, which is a combination of flying geese and half-square triangles. Right. Well, this one, this one didn't have flying geese. Or is that that's the one? Yeah, that's the one we did Friday. Right. The one before that was flying geese. That was part one. Part one, which is right here. There you go. That's the one. Cool. And they had names. Do you remember the names? Uh, which names? The historic names. Oh, um, yes. The free trade block and which then is this one and uh susan's block no susan's block is the, free, is the free trade, trade block okay now i'm forgetting the other one now clay's choice clay's choice okay, okay. in the history for I was, today i was one for two well That's you out. did pretty good i'll take it considering you're not a quilter you're doing really good yep quilters are addicted to it you're not maybe <laughs> not yet <laughs> anyway um this is pinwheel star basically and the only history about it is that they decided to put a pinwheel inside a traditional star block okay and here you can show that camera over there real quick so okay so um tell me about the differences between well you'll get into that i guess so um there was a, go ahead ask no uh why they call it the pinwheel is it because of the shape that the, okay, the see outside this? makes in here mm -hmm. in the center is a pinwheel block gotcha Okay. Okay. So we will do that. And uh, we will get over here. I will get the... And the thing about these patterns is if you come in and ask for these patterns that I have, I'll get you one printed out. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. We have them in our computer. And this is the pinwheel star. You see on this one, a little bit better, you can see the pinwheel in the with, center. Yeah, with the white and the blue, you can tell it a little bit um, better. This is the what the pattern came, these color schemes. We did this because we were focusing on the stars. Mm -hmm. So this had the difference where the focus was on this one is on the stars. Right. And this one is on the pinwheel. And it's called a pinwheel star. Basic 12-inch 12, 12 block. Mm -hmm. And we are going to go over here to... There you Close go. Close up. And we can see this here. Yep. And here the pattern tells you step by step. So it says you need four of these. And what are these called? Half square triangles. Very, very good. So we've got half square triangles. And I'll show you something different on the half square triangles that we, for the pinwheel. Okay. Um, and then we need the flying geese units. Yep. And we need four of those. Okay. So there's four of those and four of those. And they're all in this pile here in different steps and different use. And then we need four of just plain old three and a half inch squares. Okay. So we're going to now 
move back over here to this and can you even see okay on the yeah okay i have a question how have we been telling you to press on the half square triangles uh to the dark side to the dark side this particular on the pinwheel it lays better and lays flatter if you press it open so we've got two half square triangles and this is the way we normally press mm -hmm. and I, and this is kind of hard because they're close together but i press right. to that one on that half square triangle okay. but for this with the pinwheel it will lay flatter in the very very see see how many pieces you have meeting right there in the pinwheel yeah so it's kind of gets bunched you've got up eight a bit, right yeah. there and if they're all pressed to the side they get real bulky so you so this, split it helps with the bulk okay so you press it open and that's how you usually press when you do clothing and if you want to bring uh leave that one right where it's at and then just put the other one that's pressed to the dark side so you can kind of see the difference yeah you can see the difference here Let so you me... can see one yeah there you go so you can see one on the left which is obviously just pressed to one side and uh -huh. you can see the one on the right that is pressed in the center so this is thicker right here so mm -hmm. right here there's three layers because you basically push pushed two levels or layers of fabric over to one side as opposed to splitting it right. down the middle and having one on each side. So you have three layers here and here you just have two and two. Right, okay. Okay, so that will help with the bulk. And then you sew these together and we have sewn them together. I see. And then pressed it open. Mm -hmm. So if we had pressed this to the side and this to the side, you would end up with about eight layers already right there. Right. right now we have, um, I think it's four at the very thickest part. Okay. But this is what you've got on the front is a half of a pinwheel. Mm hmm And you Let's make see. two yeah. of these. And I don't know if, I don't think it shows the picture of the pinwheel step for half of them on, on the pattern, but it, it's easy enough because you're going to do the four and you're going to do them in a pinwheel. Okay. So you end up with your pinwheel. Let's and see. it lays relatively flat. How you get the point here, remember our, t our trick with our pen, and I already lost a pen, here it is. Where we've got, and can you see close here? Yep. Where you've got your point right here, you put your pen through it, and the other pen, uh, there, the, through the other point, mm -hmm. and then you pin, put your pen like that. So that's how we get the point right there so it all stays together. So get, yeah, if it was off a little bit, your pinwheel would be a little bit crooked. But that's your pinwheel block. You can do a whole quilt with just pinwheel blocks. Nice. And make them bigger, smaller, whatever you want to do. Some people use these in a cornerstone, mm -hmm. which is in in your border. Okay. And in your border, it's cornerstone is what it is. You know, it's in the corners. So some people want to make their cornerstone a little bit more fancy, so they'll do a pinwheel block. This is a very useful block. And here again, it looks a little bit complicated, but what? Remember what it's made of? Whoops. Fold it the right side out. It's made of? A bunch of half square triangles. So you, if, once you learn half square triangles, you can do a multitude of things. Multi right. Multitude. Nice. Okay, so there's that. And then and we, that will go into the center. That is your that's center, your center piece of, of your the, block. Of this block. Okay. Okay. Then you have four of your flying geese units. Mm -hmm. And remember how we did that? We put this one on first. Yep. And then pressed it that way. And yep. then put this one on first and put it on top of that. Mm -hmm. And remember when you sew it to something, you want to make sure that you don't cut your point off or leave an extra space. Right. But that's your basic Flying geese. Flying geese. So these blocks, flying geese squares and half square triangles. So you have this here. And we made some of these last week. All we did was add the squares onto the ends of the flying geese. So we had the flying geese. Mm -hmm. And you add a square there. Yep. And a square there. So this is basically creating your border. Well, it's one of the rows in your block. Right. One of the rows in your block. So you've got that there. Take this away. And we've got two of these. 
So we've got those. And then you have mm -hmm. your pinwheel block. And so you're going to add to the pinwheel block your flying geese. I'm just going to overlap that just a little bit. I didn't have time to make another row. I'm making like two and a half blocks for every one of these showing them in class. <laughs> and I trying to get ready for quilt market. I'm a little bit running out of time. So that's your center row. Nice. And then you'll sew this on there and mm -hmm. that on there and there's your block and you can see the star. Yep. And here is the block that you made. Nice. Very cool. And see, that's easy enough. I bet you feel now like you could make this whole quilt just about. If I was a little bit more confident with my sewing abilities, <laughs> I think that I could. Well, it takes practice. It does it take is. practice, yeah. But yes. no, I, I, I can see it's, it's interesting the way that you're, um, the way that you're piecing it together. You can literally see step by step how to actually do it. And then with that on top of the fact that you have, you know, you can get a printout of your step by step instructions, which will kind of help you along the process. And really, what you mentioned, I mean, if you can do a, if you can do a half square triangle. And, and, you can flying put, and, and you can do the flying geese, you can really kind of like the other, the bigger pieces are just really bigger pieces that kind of pull everything together. Right. So the um, starting just like right in the center with the half square triangles, if you can master that and figure out, you know, what colors you want to use, the right kind of thread that you want to use, you know, it really, it, it um, I don't want to say it's, it's, it's easy, but you make it seem simple. So Well, um, it's step yeah. by step. Yeah. Step by step. And the other thing on our, on our patterns is at the bottom here on the very back. It's a bonus. How to um, finished half square triangles, three inch finished half square triangles. It tells you what to do, what to cut. And remember we, we talked about in half square triangles that you do three, um, three, three inches and then adds, um, like your finished size is three inch. Right. So when it goes, goes into here, it ends up being three inches. Right. So when you're doing squares that you cut, they're three and a half inches because mm -hmm. you have your seam allowance. Mm -hmm. On the half square triangles, you have to add an additional three eighths. So this on here has the math in here for you for your cutting out your, your half square triangles. And it tells you step by step how to do it, how to, how to make them. Um, it's six steps on how to do the half square triangles. And these come on on these patterns too. Okay. So those will... Those are good, good, easy, and they are good enough for beginners. Right. So we'll get your sewing skills together, and then you can do a quilt. That's right. I just got to pick my colors. Yeah. I got to figure out what that's, colors I want to use. That, that sometimes is a hard thing for some people to do is, is right. pick their colors because I had somebody yesterday call me, and she said, well, I've got red on my quilt, but I really love purple, and I, what am I going to do with the red? What they had is they had a quilt top, huge king size, and they're splitting it in half. It was one that um, his mom made. Okay. And they wanted to make one for each of their um, beds. Okay. But they wanted it, so they split it in half, and it, and it was an extra king size. It was pretty big. And it has red in it already. And she said, well, red won't go with purple. I said, it depends on the purple you use. Right. So you can come in today and and get purple and we will make we will make it work with the red so if you like red and you like purple we can make it work yes. there's some purples that just won't go with red and they'll, they'll clash but there are other purples that will love red right so and uh and all these and you'll see in the commercial that we're going to play here in a second um from susan's uh store hider hangout uh, you have a lot of different options to choose from as far as colors and right. fabric and styles and things like that. So sometimes I, I can, people come in and they get overwhelmed and I have too so many choices. A, yeah, you'll, you'll see. I you'll said, see. well, if you tell me what you want, we'll, we'll right. narrow it down. And um, that's, that's good. I have a couple things I'm doing. Today I'm actually going to the quilt store in... Jasper, Tennessee. I better say Tennessee because everybody says Georgia or Tennessee. Right. She unfortunately has some family issues and she's moving to Kentucky. Mm. So she is going out of business and this is her last week of being here. 
She's got everything in the store on sale. Oh. I'm going down there and helping her getting getting a few of her fixtures because that's nice. the, one of the hardest things right. um, to get rid of. Right. And uh, that is so notions in Jasper. And uh, so she said, invite everybody. And I said, well, I'll do that on TV. And yeah. She'll be happy. But she, I don't know if she'll be open Saturday, but she's got to be out of there Saturday. So Friday through Friday. Okay. So that'll be be that, and then I'm also going. Remember the girl that came in, and had the Janome sewing machines. Yes. I'm going. She's to, from Georgia. She's from Georgia. North Ringgold. Georgia, Ringgold. Yeah. And I'm going to her shop today. I'm going to pick up a part for a machine, and then then see her shop. I haven't actually been friends with her for about two years, and haven't. When you have a shop, you hardly get out anywhere. <laughs> right. No. I. Yeah. I bet. And. Uh, she and I are working together, and any Janome machine you want, you can come to me, and we can get it for you. Okay. But she and I are working together, and I'm helping her with the AccuQuilt thing. We're kind of scratching each other's back and doing that. And if you haven't had a chance, you should definitely take a look at our uh, WTMB YouTube channel, because if you, you should see the episode about the sewing machines, because these are some pretty super high-tech yeah. pieces of machinery that, uh, I mean, almost, I don't want to say they do the sewing for you, but, man, they've figured out a lot of the steps. <laughs> <laughs> almost <laughs> do the sewing simple. for you. And I real, I fell in love with that machine, and I'm like, okay. Um, when, I, when I get things worked around and, and get my remodel finished, Mom, put, start stacking that money away to get yeah. me one of those machines. Man, they're nice. And um, she wouldn't – I tried to pry a little bit and get some price points from her, but it's, it's, well, all, it's, all, she, case, it's all case by she case. She is not allowed to advertise some prices right? because they – some of the companies hold you to, ter- to certain things, but right. – um, and depending what on when do, somebody watches it, the video, I mean, you could watch the video six months later and be like, oh, you said the price was X yeah. amount of dollars. And it could have gone now up. it's up or, you know, yeah. uh, you got to be but careful with that. What you do in your shop sometimes is different than what you're allowed to advertise right. to. Right. Like with AccuQuilt, I can't say anything lower than what's on sale. Right. But we have a club in, in the shop and they're allowed to get things. So yes. there's, a, there's a way to do it. And, and so we don't usually advertise a lot of things unless there's you know a sale price that that we agree with and we'll advertise that but right well uh you should definitely go to uh susan's store uh hide or hang out if you enjoy what we've been doing this morning uh susan teaches classes uh, all throughout the week uh, you can go to her website hideorhangout.com and take a look at the happenings tab and go to classes or go to her schedule and actually kind of take a look at a glance at what she has available her store is actually located uh, across from the First Street Square, across from Catch Restaurant, and next to Trailhead Bicycle Company. Right. And your hours of operation, your Monday, your... Uh, Monday, we're closed until June 1st. And then we'll right. be open for Mondays um, during the summer. Okay. Um, but every other day, you're pretty much yeah, in some yeah, capacity that you yeah, are, you except are for there. Yeah, except for Sundays. And actually, we've been known to come in. There's travelers. Oh, I can't get there Saturday. What do you do Sunday? And I say, I'll come in for appointments on Sunday. Mm-hmm. But um, 10 till 5... Tuesday through Saturday, except for Thursday, is noon until 7. Mm-hmm. And we were open for the dine around. And if there's anything special downtown, we'll be open for the hours there. Um, but just call if you're wondering if we'll be open. And a lot of times I'm working after, and if I'm there, I let people in. Nice. And uh, it is a very... Uh, fun and friendly atmosphere at the Hyder Hangout. There's always uh, some folks there that are usually hanging out, either waiting for a class to start or just hanging out to, to work on some quilts. So right. uh, you can go by her store, and you'll see in the commercial here in a second that she's got a lot of options to choose from as far as fabric, all the utensils and accessories that you need to put something together, and also if you actually need some help uh, either with your existing quilt or making your own, she can kind of give you some instruction and some guidance and on how fabrics. to do it. And other fabrics, yeah. too. We have a little bit of upholstery fabric, and I actually did a bicycle, I mean, not a bicycle, a motor a motorcycle seat the other day. Really? So, yeah. Working with leather? It's um, the, the, the fall leather, the, the, the vinyl, What I guess they call it vinyl or whatever. Faux? Naga The hide. F-A-U-X, yeah. I think, faux, faux F-A-U-X, leather? yeah. Yeah, okay. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> um, well, cool. A- any preview for next week? Well, are we are we doing something Wednesday? 
I'm not positive about that. I have to double check the schedule with Josh. Josh isn't here this morning, but we have a few things that are going on schedule-wise this week leading into our our summer break, and we also have some graduations that are coming up. So we're we're working with some schools on some possible. Uh, I don't want to release anything too soon, but we might okay. be doing some live. Well, I know you guys are both not going to be here Friday. Friday is not. Yeah, Friday we have a pre-scheduled appointment um, for for some live production, but uh, I'll have to double check with him on that. Well, you'll let me know, and I'll I will, yes. I'll, I'll do another block whether in whether or not it's Wednesday or Monday. Mm-hmm. Monday, I will be probably a. a, a Oh, Monday I get to leave for Quilt Market. <laughs> so tell, I, tell me a little bit about that. Um, where, where I'm is it so at? excited. Um, first time I've gotten to go. They say every quilt owner, quilt shop owner needs to go at where, where least once. This year, the spring one is in St. Louis. Oh, okay. I actually every just there. fall, it's in Houston. And I, mm-hmm. and I don't know if I'll get, you know, because it takes a chunk of money to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. This one, um, I have a quilt shop owner in um, Springfield, Tennessee, that has friends up there, and we're staying with the friends, and we're driving up together, and it's classes for quilt shop owners. Nice. It's vendors that have all their stuff. So there's the market day, and you have I have one appointment with one one of my suppliers already, mm-hmm. and then there's classes, and then there's the um, what they call schoolhouse, which is classes all day. Um, the point of sale people that do my host my host my website and I've been with them for um, I think it's almost six years now. Um, when they first started, they were just website, and then they went to point of sale, and that's who I have for my point of sale now. Okay. And there's a six hour long plus dinner thing with them on Wednesday. And um, schoolhouse is Thursday, and then vendor vendor market is Friday and Saturday, plus classes all st- stuck in here and there. And um, I think it's Thursday night sample spree, and I heard that that's like a sample spree. The all the book writers and um, different ones have all kinds of samples, and sometimes they end up with more than one. Because remember, like me here, I have. Um, almost three blocks for every one that I'm teaching here. Mm -hmm. So they end up with a whole lot of samples. And Mm -hmm. so it's like, I don't know if it's how it is, but they say it's a mess. So I don't know if it's first come, first serve, and they hold it up, and whoever gets there first. And my um, friend said she's going to, for a joke, take a football helmet and wear it in there just for a joke. (laughs) So I hear that's kind of, you have to do it at least once. You may never want to do it again, but. Right. Well, the cool thing about markets and conventions and things like that, you make a lot of really good connections. Right. You, you see other folks that are doing what you're doing and you, you, you learn a lot from a lot of different people, um, which is really cool. And then also, you you know, with the classes and things like that, you, you get to learn something else and bring it back and, and, and share that knowledge with right. some other folks. So you, you kind of be, uh, become this conduit of all this information and, and resources just by going to one of these things and making and these I connections. And I hope to find somebody that's written a book that I can get a little bit of help with because I'm writing that cabin, oh, yeah, cabin right. block of the month book. Um, the girl and I worked on it the other day, and I was like, oh, there's just too much work to it. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, it's taking the picture step by step is the, is the hardest part. Right. So I've get to, I get to make all the blocks again and yeah. take a picture step by step. And, and when is this again, the market? The market, I leave Friday, I leave Monday after show. Okay. I go up to Springfield, Tennessee, and one of my suppliers is up there, and I'm going to go visit them. And then I'm going to um, my friend's house, and she's actually, Monday evening, has some kind of women in business um, dinner Mm -hmm. um, networking thing. And I'm going to that with her. And then on Tuesday, we're going to St. Louis. You driving? We're driving. Woo. It's a stretch. Well, from Springfield, it's three hours closer. That's true. That's so true. You Monday, are, you are breaking it three, up. Yeah, Monday I do three hours, and then um, after that, I think it's six hours. Yeah. On on Tuesday. Yeah, it's that's not bad. You're you're breaking it up. Well, to see, we're getting there Tuesday, and then Wednesday is when we have stuff. Gotcha. So we're close. We'll be closer, and we won't. You know, like if we had to get up at dawn on Wednesday to try to get there by two thirty on on Wednesday, that would be bad. But we're going right. up. Tuesday and then taking it leisurely. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm excited. Good, good. <laughs> well, um, we're going to take a break. I saw Miss Wendy come in, so I, I believe we have um, a few more things coming up here. But uh, watch this commercial with Hyder Hangout. You'll see her shop. 
go by and check her out on the First Street Square. And uh, thank you again, Susan, for yes. coming in this and we morning. Will, and the store will be open while I'm gone. I don't know how good everybody will do, but <laughs> my husband has not learned how to cut fabric yet, so usually if you come in here, tell me how, how much you to can, cut. You can you purchase cut your it. fabric, but you might want to wait to get it cut until Susan gets back. So <laughs> No, we've got girls that are going to be in, but if my husband has been known to say, here, you cut it, I'll measure it, you cut it, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> which is okay. Well, good. All right, well, we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back on the Good Morning Show. Quilts and the art of quilting have been enjoyed for generations. Hyder Hangout, Quilt Fabric and More in downtown Cleveland is all things quilts and much more. Hyder Hangout stocks a vast selection of beautiful fabrics from upholstery to evening wear and will special order hard to find items. Find all the accessories to make any project fun and easy. Hyder Hangout offers expert instruction with classes for the beginner and the advanced. Ready to show your style? Get to Hyder Hangout, Quilt Fabric and More, 219 First Street Northeast, downtown Cleveland.